Hill a minute. Unable to win the tip there, won by Woltman, and the Pioneers will get the ball, bringing it up. On the perimeter, out to the wing. And a deep shot, already letting it fly. Megan Boyd hits the deep three. Yesterday in practice, Denver was keeping it really light, right? Not going too hard. So Boyd was putting up a lot of threes, and she was making them. So great start here for Denver and Boyd. And as for the Boilers, looking to build here and disrupt what Denver has built, which is quite a win streak. Denver coming off of th a three-game win streak. Heading in here, great steal and the put up. Brilliant play there by the Boilermakers. And that one a little, a little far off the back iron. Terry bringing it up down to the corner. And you can put it on the board. Yes, Abby Ellis drains the corner three, tying us up. Or had, uh, my apologies, it's five to three. Here in Mackey Arena as the Pioneers. Again from deep, just a bit long. But Boyd exhibiting her confidence to let it fly. There was Uju on the offensive board right there. And that's one thing that the Boilers have to work on. In their last game against Maryland, they were out-rebounded by, I believe, 15 rebounds on the offensive end. And if you look at the replay here, just a little bit of contact coming in there from behind, enough to warrant the whistle. And, and, those, and, offense, and those offensive rebounds that they're losing, I think that's the loss of Rashea Kyle. 100% Rashea Kyle, an essential part of the Boilermakers rebounding game, the tallest player in the Big Ten. Exactly. She's huge for their defense and for their boards. And right there, Denver able to secure the ball. And There's swung a, into the corner, shot up, and was, in. That was a nice kick out to Anna Jackson. Anna Jackson, she has the ability to explode. She had 36 points earlier this season. And ball movement, throwing it onto the inside. That's Layden, Layden moving it around. Setting up with Abby Ellis, driving in, kicking out. Terry on the perimeter. Sends it out into the corner, drive in. Pretty move and easy layup for Ricky Woltman. Very good court awareness there. I believe that play was set up by Abby Ellis on the drive. And just like that, the Boilermakers retake the lead. Oh, and a beautiful drive. Nice mid-range shot, but just long from Megan Boyd. And driving in is Ellis. Another play to Woltman, and Woltman with her second basket in a row. That's two straight down under. Great job. And it appears that the referee is going to stop play, perhaps for an issue with the headband on Janae Terry. Issue with oh, the headband? Maybe she's, is she bleeding? It's, it's, maybe it has some kind of significance to her. Maybe. Well, either way, as oh. long as she's comfortable and letting it fly from deep, but just a little long was India Sanders. That was a wide open shot for India Sanders. And India Sanders, she hit in the third overtime, she hit the buzzer beating tie to send it to four OTs. So India Sanders, a huge part of this Denver offense. And that's a traveling violation on Abby Ellis, who's gingerly bouncing to the other end of the floor. Ellis walking down the floor. The Boilermakers oh. did not sustain another injury. A little knee-to-knee -knee contact there on that drive in the post. Probably nothing to worry about, just a little bit of pain there. We've all been there. Ball in Uju's hands. Let's see what she does right here. And the Boilermakers able to make a defensive stop. And switching the court up. Here's Cass Harden. 
And you can put it on the board. Yes, Cass Harden. That's huge for Cass Harden. She has been in a shooting slump the past two games. Boilermakers need her to get back to her usual self, shooting around 40% from three, but that's not what she's been the past few games. So huge right here. And ball movement around the perimeter. You know, she talks about trying to get back into rhythm, and a lot of that is just finding that confidence. <clears throat> and Tess Santos, looking around, was frustrated with the lack of ball movement, made a play for herself, brilliant little spin move right outside the restricted area. And swinging it, shot up, and in! A brilliant three from Abby Ellis. The girl from down under from downtown. Oh, another nice shot from Megan Boyd. And Megan Boyd was another player that she had a rough day shooting two against Butler. Megan Boyd is exhibiting a lot of confidence in shooting. Ricky Woltman, really nice move, but unable to finish. Bodies yeah. on the ground. Denver's got a fast break right here. Running the advantage shot from deep. And just a bit long off the back iron. That was a shot from Anna Jackson. And Anna Jackson, she actually played the most minutes in that game versus Butler. 58 minutes. My goodness. It was a pinball game on the rim. But it goes down for Abby Ellis. Abby Ellis with eight so far for the Boilermakers. Oh, and brilliant hustle defense from the Boilermakers. And they've got the advantage. That was Cassidy Harden getting in there on the help defense. Here's her shot. Megan Boyd gets the board. Seventeen to ten, driving in and somehow finding a window to get the shot off was Uju Azudu. Really difficult position there. Great body control to get that one off the glass. One thing Uju said is she she feels like an underrated part of her game is how strong she is. She works out really hard in the offseason. So she's got a lot of strength, so she uses that to her advantage down, down under the basket. And there she is again, boxing out, getting the rebound. And shot from deep. Off again, Brooke Moore. Uh, my apologies, Megan Boyd. Boyd hit that first one and is now one for three from deep. And Ricky Woltman. Get physical down there, Ricky Woltman. Talk about a strong move down there. Really aggressive take. Move the defender out of the way, put it up. And the Pioneers looking to get something going. A drive in and another excellent display of body control by Uju Azudu. Azudu again, another point. Really He's tough take up there. You see Waltman body a Denver player on one side, Uju bodies a Boilermaker on the other. That's a huge matchup we could be looking at. Right now they got Boyd on. And swinging it out to Ellis, seven seconds to shoot, driving in, loses the ball, and they're gonna say it went off of her leg and out of bounds. And if you drive in, see the drive there, just right off the hands, let it go out, looking to draw the call, but Looks like, and you want to talk about scoring? Brooke Moore on the court for the Boilermakers. 22 points off the bench, leading the team. And Brooke Moore was honestly the reason that the Boilermakers were able to be in the game. Here she is driving off her foot. And that, that does happen from time to time. You know, you get moving too fast, mm -hmm. stop thinking about where the ball's going to land there, and it just pops right off her foot. And the Pioneers heading down the court. On the outside, Emily Council. Tess Santos. 
and it appears that they're looking to build down in the post, but nothing really opening up. And swing out, shot from the corner, and just a bit long. That one off the hands of Jocelyn Wyatt. There's Brooke Moore. And she's getting started early. Brooke Moore from way downtown sinks her first of the day. Love to see that. Is this going to be another 22-point explosion off the bench? Well, the Boilermakers will have to wait and see. And the Pioneers now down, now down eight. And it looks like there's going to be a substitution coming in. Anna Jackson coming in for the Pioneers. Anna Jackson, as I was saying earlier, she played 58 minutes. And like, when was the last time you heard of a player playing 58 minutes, Charlie? Well, you have to have a lot of extra time. And I would say four overtimes warrants a lot of extra time. She talks about the recovery. She's, she said that, you know, one of the things that she does, obviously rest, hydration, but they also have a lot of ice baths as well. And that's a basket and one. Really great play by India Sanders to drive in there with under a minute left. Clock ticking down and able to finish and get the free throw opportunity here. And she completes the end one with the free throw. And India Sanders has three. Came into the outside, shot up, and in. Cass Harden, another three. Heating up. Cass Harden, look at that. Two for three on the day so far today. In interviews, Cass Harden said that she predicted her stat line to have five threes, so almost halfway there. Oh, great hustle play by Brooke Moore, saving the ball, tossing it in, got by the Boilermakers. The swing, Is the shot, threes? and oh. in! Oh. An electric play by Cassidy Harden. Another three for Cass Harden. To end the half, and welcome back, where at the end of that first quarter, there was an electric play by Cassidy Harden. Well, started with Brooke Moore, sent across the court, and then Cassidy Harden drained her third three. The Boilermakers shooting 60% from three in the first quarter, 68.8% from the field. Talk about efficiency. And this is something that uh, Coach Woods talked about for Denver, improving their defense. They've been really trying to improve their defense this year. I think that's a foul on Rokia Dumbia. And there's Cassidy Harden, as previously mentioned, nine points, three for four from three, with three assists, all in that first quarter. And, and this the first free throw is gonna go down for Anna Jackson. And for Cassidy Harden, that comes after shooting four of 22 from distance the past two games. Three of 13 against Merrigan, Maryland, and one of nine against Ohio State. And she sinks the pair, Anna Jackson. Able to finish, and Brooke Moore bringing the ball up the court. And interestingly, without Woltman, the Boilermakers running a very small lineup. And they're going to call that one a carry. It'll be Pioneer ball. I mean, without Rashad Kyle, the Boilers are naturally running a, a small ball lineup. And if you look here, yeah, just carry it over that ball a little bit. But yeah, without Rache Kyle, against, against Maryland, they actually started four guards. And driving inside are the Pioneers. Kicking out. And the fadeaway just off, off the hand of Michaela Minnett. Rebounded by Rokia Dumbia. And Dumbia was another huge player off the bench. Dumbia had 10 points and made all four of her shots. So, huge efficiency. And Cassidy Harden misses that one from deep. 
That one would have been an NBA three way behind the line. And a defensive tip. Good hustle from Janae Terry. Great, great job reading that play, getting your hands up, get in the passing lane right there. And Ricky Woltman gonna check back in here. As you see that ball going out of bounds there, really good hustle play by Cassidy Harden. And she's gonna find herself on the bench here, grab a, grab a quick break. Took a hard fall, so yeah, that break's gonna be nice and needed. And from the corner, and sinks it. Brilliant three by Madison Layton. Layton, her first shot of the day. Let's see if she can get going. Obviously, Layton stands as one of Purdue's offensive leaders. Layton has come out a little slow to start the season, but looking to get things back on track. And they're going to say that that's Boilermaker ball. And one thing about Layden, she's only a sophomore. After starting all the games as a freshman, comes in, starts as a sophomore. She's still got two more years left, so by the time she develops. And Madison Layden really has been a, a very important part of this Boilermaker team. And you know, an important difference between those two years is you have to deal with the coaching change and a short corner shot from Brooke Moore. And Coach Doshia Woods is gonna wanna talk this over with her team. Something going here. Absolutely, let's see what Coach Woods has drawn up out of the timeout. Definitely trying to get a good shot here. But first, you got to advance it past half court. The, the Boilermakers came out with a very aggressive full court trap. And that's a way to break it up. A deep three from Tess Santos. Nice job by Santos getting to her spot wide open with the Boilers trapping. Hits the shot. And that's what you want to see right out of the timeout. You, wide open three, exactly what Coach Woods draws up. And more. Swinging it across the floor to Ellis. Ellis to Terry. Terry from the logo and gets it in. Right from the big logo inside the paint. The Boilermakers, three of their last three from the field. And a steal by Abby Ellis. And she's got one to beat. Puts the move on. Draws the foul, can't get the shot to go. Abby Ellis going to the line for two. Abby Ellis with the active hands. And here she is. Tried to put the spin move on, just clipped her from behind. Abby Ellis with the active hands defensively. Gets the ball, steals it. Turns defense to offense just like that. Hits the free throw too. Abby Ellis has been fantastic from the free throw line so far. Coming into today, 91% from the charity stripe. And she converts both of hers there. 91%, you don't even see that in the NBA. It's a pretty impressive statistic. That is insane. And a nice ball inside, spin move up. Oh, oh, a little dream shake there. Uju Azudu finding a way to get through the height advantage of Woltman. And the Boilers gonna feed Woltman in the post. She drives in, gets under, and gets the layup in. Using the glass as her friend. Let's see if Uju comes right back. That's a huge that's a huge matchup right there. And there goes Uju. Draws the foul. And the whistle there. And there's gonna be a substitution. It's gonna be Cheyenne Forney. Giving India Sanders a little break. And 
and at the line, Uju Azudu. All righty, and at the free throw line, Ujudu sinks it. Misses the first, makes the second. Splits him at the line, and the Boilermakers leading by 14. And that miss was, wasn't necessarily rare for Uju. She's 80% from the line. But against, uh, but against Butler, she was three of five, so. Yeah, play, playing in the college game, it's pretty good to see your team shooting as a collective group above 70, 75%. Absolutely. And Uju going to work again. She had the defensive rebound, gets the offensive rebound, but loses it out of bounds. And I think that's going to be called a foul. That one's going to be Pretty on sure. number 22 was the signal he made to the bench. It was on Madison Layden, 33. He missignaled. Miss and the Pioneers looking to build on the inbound. Gets something going from deep. Let's it fly and a bit long, but not so fast. Hustle rebounding play there. Unable to convert. And the Boilermakers are on the offensive. Pushing the pace right there. Jayla Smith, former Indiana Miss Basketball. Converts on the transition bucket. Great job by Smith. She had her first start last weekend. Jayla Smith definitely taking advantage of the opportunities awarded to her thus far. And then just like that, she gets a huge rebound. And swings it to the side, Cassidy Harden. And sinks it. You gotta love, you gotta love that court vision by Abby Ellis right there. Kicks it cross court to Cassidy Harden. Bang. Her fourth of the evening. Four for six. And a late whistle there. As Uzudu went up, they're gonna say made some contact. This is what I'm talking about. Azudu's strength under the rim. She's got four Boilermakers on her, and she's fighting. She's grabbing those offensive rebounds, Charlie. And she's really hustling to get to that line, Brendan, which, as you mentioned, I believe you said she's an 80% free throw shooter, and that's a key part of how Denver is able to put so many points on the board every night because they're able to rely on Azudu to find her way to the line and to make them just like that. Azudu already has nine, eight points. And her average is 16 on the season. But Nikita on top of Dubia that, checks in. But on top of Zudu's um, eight points on the day, she also averages eight rebounds, and she already has five. And Brooke Moore looks like she passed that ball to Doshia Woods over there, and that's going to be Denver basketball. Here comes Denver on the offensive. Puts the nice little move on. Got the ball in Tess Santos' hands. Let's see what she can do. And air balls that one. And Purdue's gonna be going in the other direction. Crowd yelling air ball. And swings it up to the top. Back out the Boilermakers, still shooting the ball very well. 70.8% as a collective team. Found the mismatch inside. Here goes Waltman. Through two defenders and finishes to complete the and one. What a play by Waltman. Too big, too strong, too tall. They got nothing on her, Charlie.
To quote the great Stacy King, too big, too fast, too strong, too good. As Waltman goes to the line to shoot a free throw here. And Denver looking for some offensive leadership. Azudu swings it out, finds the open woman, and nails the three. That was Anna Jackson. And Anna Jackson, she had a 36-point explosion against A&M Corpus Christian. 10 of 17 from three. Kind of an outlier game for her, but to shoot, to get that hot, she said she's never been that hot from three before. And to get in that zone, that felt different. Everything rolled in. Even shots that she said that didn't feel like were going in, they still went in. There was some magic in Corpus Christi for her. And the Boilermakers. Brooke Moore with another turnover there off of the knee. And a drive in and the finish for Mary Wilson. Mary Wilson gets the steal and the layup. You know, the Boilermakers got a 14 point lead, but you know, they don't they want to keep it at this distance, right? Denver's obviously going to be trying to get back into it slowly, and that's how you get it. Turnovers. And Cassidy Harden from way downtown, right in front of the bench, nails her fifth three of the game. But that's how you keep that comeback away. Cassidy Harden nailing another three. And you said Cassidy Harden promised five threes earlier, and uh, Cassidy Harden has fulfilled that promise in the first half. Well, we see Cassidy Harden shooting 10 of 17. Maybe. And the struggle for the rebound. Boltman unable to bring it in is going to tip it out. Cassidy Harden did have a 6 of 12 game against Florida State. And a bit of a lineup change coming here. And the defensive hustle to knock the ball away by Janae Terry. Knocks the inbound out. And Cassidy Harden, 15 points, all coming from her five of seven from three-point range. She, only, she yeah. only needs three more points to tie her season high, which is 18. All the fives are hitting threes today as Anna Jackson sinks one there. And Abby Ellis goes down and converts on the fast break. While well, Cassidy Harden has been raining threes, Ellis has quietly been also a huge star for this Boilermaker offense. As Anna Jackson misses another three. And Purdue calls timeout. Boilermakers. Absolutely. And today, four or five from the field, 12 points. Ellis averages on the season not that many, I believe. Oh, finds the cutter. And practically unguarded, Madison Layden beats the defender and gets in for the layup. Madison Layden, kind of quiet today, but you still got to pay her a lot of attention. Still one of the best, one of the best players on this Purdue roster. I believe that's a coach's dream to be able to have enough players that are able to pop off at any given time. And there's 10 seconds left, clock ticking down on the game clock, and they're going to call a foul. Foul on Cassidy Harden on the drive to the basket. And just a little bit of a bump there. It's going to warrant the whistle. And Jocelyn Wyatt going to be at the line. Jocelyn Wyatt, not, not a huge uh, impact player for this team, only averaging 2.7 points a game, but she still comes in and makes a big impact. Denver not having this shot, but thinking ahead. They already have two players back on defense, not wanting to award the Boilermakers any last chance of energy. And Madison Layden from deep misses that one. Ball go out of bounds with .1 seconds left. You talk about not wanting to award a last second shot. I feel like the Boilermakers would uh, be pretty familiar with that after that men's game. Against 
Marshall made the game a lot more interesting in the second half, and I think that Denver is going to come out here with a new game plan, new approach, and uh, start getting things to go their way. Absolutely. It'll be very interesting to see how the Boilermakers finish. Will they finish strong, or will they fall flat on their face? Not a good start as they allow two offensive rebounds to the Pioneers, but they get a little fortunate there. A little bit of a turnover as Megan Boyd unable to haul that ball in. Megan Boyd, quiet first, first half. Five points, two of five from the field, one of three from three, and only two assists. And keep in mind, that's playing on only eight minutes. And from deep, just off was Madison Layden. And one thing about Megan Boyd, in that four overtime game against Butler, she played 52 minutes. So could, could being tired be a huge factor in why she's not playing as much as, let's say, other players like Anna Jackson? It's distinctly possible. And uh, going forward, we'll have to see if maybe it was just conservation to use that energy in the second half. And the active hands from the Purdue defense strike again, Madison Layden able to disrupt that pass. Ball over the top, at the top of the key. Driving inside, shot up and no good. That one off by Ozudu. Abby Ellis passes it to Cassidy. And Cassidy James Harden with her sixth three-pointer of the contest, six for eight. And the defensive hands active again. Madison Layden breaking up a pass on the inside. Excellent start from the Boilermaker defense. And it looks like India Sanders going to check in here. India Sanders hopefully going to give him a spark. Another great defensive play right there by Janae Terry. Bang, bang, bang. Cassidy Harden. That's not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, but seven made threes in tonight's contest. 21 points, a new season high for her. Charlie, are, are flamethrowers allowed in Mackey Arena? It appears that they might be if Cassidy Harden is not being sent out. And speaking of number fives getting hot, Anna Jackson. It's a shot from deep. That's one that Anna Jackson really needed. She's three of seven from three. Huge, hopefully she gets in her own rhythm. And we've talked about Purdue's active hands on defense. Great knock away there by India Sanders, preventing Abby Ellis from getting, putting a move inside. Let's take a look at this. Drive by Ellis. Nice job by Sanders reaching that right arm in, knocking the ball out. And Cassidy Harden shows her human side and misses there. And we discussed the shooting percentage maybe not being sustainable for the Boilermakers, but the quality of defense they're playing sure seems to be. Absolutely. You can always sustain the quality of defense that you have. That's something that you can control. You can't control what Denver's going to do, but you can control what you're going to do. And swings it and buries it from deep. Megan Boyd. That's a good shot for Boyd. Wide open. Boilermakers have to contest that. Look at that, getting the ball right back into Ellis's hands. Ellis has been making a ton of plays for Purdue so far. And right there's the assist to Janae Terry. Janae Terry, really nice shot there from the short corner. And Denver. Gonna that be bringing the ball up the floor here. That was a nice little play by Ellis, just handing it behind her, almost like a little pick screen. Janae Terry playing some absolutely ferocious defense. Madison's in the corner. 
And Madison Layden joining the three-point party here at Mackey Arena. And if you look here, ball to the corner. Brendan, that's just beautiful. That That is, you can't stop that. You get a wide open three. I mean, obviously Denver has to contest that better, but the fast break, Layden's awareness to find the opening in the defense. And the play there is going to result in a foul, but perhaps more significantly, Cassidy Harden went down there. She appears to be back up on her feet. And you see there, just got that's, a little rolled up on. That's a tough foul. Cassidy Harden, so tough, man. She is so tough. And then. And the Purdue band about made me jump out of my seat there with the sudden yell. Let's watch this again. Ooh, was that a shot to the face? It might have been. Wow. Back of the head to the face, not anything I want to be a part of. Absolutely not. And the woes continue for Denver, unable to convert on either of their free throw attempts. Ball back at the hand of Ellis. Looks like she's looking for Layden right here. And Layden on the perimeter. Gonna get the screen, sends it over to Ellis. Writhing in. They're trying to get Harden and on that backside screen. Walton sets the screen on Harden's defender and Harden's trying to cut back. Let's grab the ball and shoot it. And Check driving foul through there, right. just a bit of a travel. You have a travel, fall, trip. A little bit of everything right there. And Denver bringing the ball up the floor. India Sanders, their floor general, going to draw the foul on Abby Ellis. And Ellis is going to get subbed out. Here goes Ellis taking a little breather. 12 points, 4-5 from the field. As I've said, she has been the floor general for the Boilers. Another amazing defensive play by Janae Terry. And the Boilers on the perimeter driving inside and drawing the Ooh. foul is Janae Terry. She hit that little she hit that little crossover on Megan Boyd. Goes up strong, but Boyd fouls her. Foul on the shot, so that's going to be two free throws for Terry. And Terry looking to improve from the line on the season for her so far. 67% on the season, and she sinks it. 24 point lead for the Boilermakers as Cassidy Harden gets the inbound steal. And draws the foul, and she'll be headed to the line for two. Denver has to clean this up. If they want a chance to come back, Denver has to clean this up. Oh, my. Both pioneers jumping up to swat that ball away, get a bit of the wrist. And, as but you know, as most coaches would say on that defensive side, if you're gonna, you can either foul them or let them get the open layup. You can't let them make the layup and foul them. Exactly. So they did in fact prevent them from doing that. So in that instance, I would say that is an excellent defensive play because so, they don't get the easy basket. Cassie Harden, 23 points as you can see now, a little update on that. Well, you don't want to give the offense an easy bucket. Looks like there's going to be a timeout here on the floor by the Boilermakers. The Denver Pioneers want to make this comeback, or at least make this slightly competitive. All right there, Uju Azudu takes care of business on the offensive end. And Uju Azudu with that does crack double digits, as well as having seven rebounds, a real hustler on both sides of the floor. Uju Azudu, seven rebounds. Her season average is eight. So on pace for another good day on the boards. And that ball sent back by Azudu, doing it on both ends. Let's watch Azudu come up. Clean block on Layden. Excellent play by Azudu. And she had four against, uh, against Butler. 
Izudu, one of the best players on this Denver team. And shot put up and in for a Madison Layden from downtown. You know, we talked about the Boilermakers and keeping this 70% field goal percentage, but, and I, and I said, I, I don't think it's possible, but the Boilers are proving me wrong. They're shooting 68% now, so unbelievable day shooting the ball for the Boilers. And shot put up by Brooke Moore and drains the mid-range shot. They're not even hitting rim anymore, Charlie. All net. Brooke Boy Moore. Boilermakers are rolling here up 28. Steamrolling the Pioneers. On the outside, Boyd. There's the ball to Azudu. Here's a mismatch right here. Azudu on Cass Cassidy Harden. Puts it up and one. Great play by Uju Azudu there. Let's watch this strong take. Put it up with the right hand. With the emotional scream at the end, great play by Zudu. And at the line is Azudu. And she's unable to convert. Not a great free throw shooting night for this Denver squad. Down to 58% from the charity stripe tonight. Brooke Moore from downtown. Doesn't go. Her Denver first now miss with of the an day. advantage. Ooh, that's a wide open shot. Take it and make it with confidence. Jocelyn Wyatt demonstrating her ability to stretch the floor. Nice crossover by Dumbia. But great, great help defense by number 34, Cheyenne Forney. And Denver's starting to roll. They've narrowed this margin to 21. And this is what you want. And Denver fights. Den this Denver team, they fight to the very end. Coach Wood said in interviews, as long as there's time on the clock, we still have a chance. That's how we practice, that's how we play. Ricky Woltman, get big down there, physically asserting her dominance and able to finish at the rim. And driving inside. Oh, what a block. Not without a foul committed against Jocelyn Wyatt, and she'll be going to the line for two. Let's look at this one more time. A little bit of the body. That's where the foul is, but my, my. She hit her, she hit her with a little stare down, too, after that. You know, uh, most people, when they look for the block they did and fouls, the average Joe looks just to the hands, mm -hmm. but a key part of it is also if there's contact in the body. Absolutely. And that's what's gonna warrant the whistle there, the little bit of a hip check into the back. Mm -hmm. And the first free throw unable to go for Jocelyn Wyatt. And able to hit the second, splitting the pair. So Charlie, I got a little question to you. Have you ever thought about the differences in playing basketball with different balls? Um, I have I have probably thought about it minimally, and Jocelyn Wyatt highlighted there. So one of those things this Denver one of the things this Denver team mentioned was when they've came, when they've come on this two game road stretch, they've been playing with different balls. They said that they usually play with Spaldings in their home court, but they're now playing with these Nike balls instead. They said it doesn't make a difference, but it's still something to, to take into account because players have said they still have to adjust to the new feel of the ball. Definitely something worthy of note. But this Denver team, not a lot of experience playing against the Big Ten. Three and eight all time. Uh, just throws it off the foot of uh, Dumbia. Well, 
in the hands of Santos. And Denver just trying to put something together. Here's a strong take by Uju. Offensive rebound. And that's what's been killing the Boilers, those offensive rebounds by their opponent. And Azuju. Azudu has four, actually. Nine rebounds in total. One away from a double-double here today. Let's check this. Yeah, it looks like that ball was just barely tipped out of bounds by Rokia Dumbia. Just barely. And they're going to call that a foul, actually, from behind. But Azudu back to the line. Makes her, makes her first free throw right there. Four of six from the line now, 66%. And she splits the pair. A sight oh, what a pass. Too Ooh. Often. Unable to, and the brilliant over oh, the head save. save. Driving in, trying to get it up, kicking it out to Moore. Moore from downtown, yes! Brooke Moore buries the corner three. Talk about an offensive possession. First. Here's Brooke Moore, hand in her face. Nothing but net. Oh my goodness, Brooke Moore. Must oh. watch TV, Brooke Moore with the steal, breakaway, driving in, finishes at the rim. And you wanna talk about coming off the bench with a presence? Brooke Moore only missed one shot, five of six, 12 points. And one more time, this is off the bench, she is not a starter. I'm going to have to clean my glasses. I think I'm seeing vintage, vintage Lou Williams in the drive up to Abby Ellis. Ellis saves the ball to Moore. Also, if you, if you didn't notice on, on the last defensive possession, I think she got a hand on that ball on the shot. Abby Ellis directing the offense, calling out the play. Moore standing in the corner. Let's see if she looks for her. The Australian native going to pass the ball, drive down inside, finds the cutter, Jayla Smith, and she's going to be fouled. And she's going to be going to the line for two. Let's look at this foul a little bit. Nice little bounce pass. Megan Boyd fouling Jayla Smith. Megan Boyd, maybe a wise foul there. I, I don't know if that was wise, because she still threw it off the bottom of the rim. Well, uh, she she fouled her, which prevented her from being able to make the easy layup and forcing her to earn her two shots at the line, which she does. Well, regardless, two points for the Boilermakers. And gets the shot off, and one. Nice play by India Sanders in the mid-range. It is something about these shot clocks coming down, end of, ha end of quarter scenarios where India Sanders just makes everything. Here we go again, pump fake, gets her jumping, oh my goodness. Through the contact and India Sanders gonna have the chance to finish the shot here and does. And the Boilermakers time ticking down, gets the shot off, but no good. Lakers lead 82 to 55. And Brendan, what? What does Denver need to change to maybe not win, but be able to make this game a little more interesting? They just need to be able to contest shots. They have to be better defensively. It's something that Coach Woods has said, and other players have said that they are working on. Like that contest right there, that was a really excellent contest. But they, the whole theme is being able to improve defensively. And to end on a good note, end strong defensively, maybe decrease this Purdue shooting percentage. That, that's what's going to be, in the end, a moral victory for this, this, this Denver team if they can't pull off a victory. And excellent ball movement. Ball out and nailed by Anna Jackson. Good shot by Jackson right there, finding the open shot. Terry at the top. Basket and one for Janae Terry. Demonstrating the strength in the post. Here it is, boop. 
Boyd bumps her elbow a little bit. Doesn't matter. Janae Terry too strong. And Terry here at the line. Terry one of two so far. Make, the, make that two of three. Terry having an excellent game. Four of five, ten points. Boilermaker shooting a collective 80% from the free throw line tonight. Very efficient opposed to uh, Denver who's 58.8, so basically 59%, 80% to 59%. And uh, you know, the, you say the free throws are the most important part of the game. Those are seven points that were left on the board by the Pioneers. And the, th and the thing that's interesting about that, the Pioneers have made 10 free throws while the Boilermakers have made only eight. But the Boilermakers have shot 10 and the Pioneers shot 17. So there are a lot more opportunities for the Pioneers. And in a game like this, especially, it, it's, it's the Pioneers' first time playing against a Big Ten opponent since December 15, 2018 against the Cornhuskers. And y you can't afford to make any mistakes when you come into hostile territory like this. What is the record against uh, Big Ten opponents, Charlie? Uh, three and eight all time. Boilermaker's kind of confused looking at this foul. Let's see where the confusion is. Mm. Probably a little slap on the wrist, but still a little frustration by the Boilermakers. Making that decision on the floor is something that none of the payers, players get paid for, and thankfully I don't get paid for. That'd be a lot of pressure. The pressure yeah. that refs have, it's... It's actually insane the pressure that refs have on them, especially the, nowadays with replay. There, there's so much pressure to get it right. And in front of, in, in front of many fans all looking at you, and especially the team with coaches yelling at you, that's a stressful position. Let's check the shove. Uh, it looks like that's a hand check there. Not really a shove, yeah. Grabbing the jersey. And the Boilermakers up 25, looking to build with just a few ticks over eight minutes left. They're trying to get Madison Layden open on a screen, but great defense here by Denver. Here comes the help defense. There's the kick out. And Madison Layden airballs that one badly. That was an excellent defensive rotation. Layden's defender comes and helps inside, and then the other outside player rotates over. That is what they call in the game help side defense. Absolutely. And Denver put on a brilliant display of it. Nice defensive play here by Cassidy Harden. Passes the ball off. Terry driving in. That's and a foul. She'll draw the contact, and she's going to the line for two. A little swipe on the wrist right there. Check this out, going up. Ooh. Tough. But hey, another opportunity at the line. And Terry gonna get a chance to put those up. And she'll nail the first one. And so one more thing on these free throws, the, the Pioneers have shot seven more than, seven more than the Boilermakers, but have made two, only two more free throws. So just another uh, representation of leaving points on the board. Earlier in this season, I had an opportunity to talk to the Boilermakers about their offensive strategy. And uh, Coach had a brilliant way of saying it motion offense and shoot before you can turn it over. And uh, the Boilermakers have been doing a lot, a lot of good play on that. Only 10 turnovers as a team today. It, it, there's another basket to add to the resume. Yeah, Katie Gerald's bringing this kind of run and gun three point shooting offense, really upping the amount of shooting that this team does. And it really does fit this team. Uh, like Cassidy Harden on fire, Abby Ellis, Madison Layden. 
Abby Ellis breaking away and gets the layup to go. Boilermakers up 31. And Denver is going to call a timeout to talk it over. Here comes Ellis on the fast break. Kaching. Little kiss off the glass as they fall behind 31 points with six and a half minutes to go. At this point, it's about building confidence, getting back in rhythm, you know, doing, doing what you do, feeling good about yourself. Yeah, at this point, all you're looking to do is just drive and stay powerful, prove that, uh, you know, you, you still have that hunger to win. It's about confidence and not making mistakes just like that. Nice little layup by Jayla Smith. What Coach Woods is going to be looking for is which players are going to be continuing to put in that effort. Right? Wait, are, are players quitting? Are players, are players tired? Right? It's an excellent opportunity for players on the bench to come in and, you know, flash what they can do. As they have two starters on the bench right now, Anna Jackson and uh, Megan Boyd. And the clock's ticking out. And... A lack of clock awareness is going to result in a turnover as Tess Santos just had no idea that the clock was ticking down. And Cassidy Harden bringing the ball up. 23 on the night for her so far. And around the perimeter, that's Smith. Smith heading in, kicks it out. Harden driving and draws the foul. Strong take. Good take by Harden. Jumping in there, flying up, putting it up, and now going to the line. Now one thing you notice here, Denver players, they got their hands on their hips. They are tired, right? Coming two nights off the four overtime game. They look kind of gassed right now. Well, the Boilermakers, they look pretty strong. And I think that's interesting because a lot the Denver players were talking about playing, playing in Denver obviously increases your cardio. You know, the elevation, the altitude. It's so much harder to breathe out there than when they come down here. And players talked about how they found it so much easier to come down to lower elevations in the Midwest. And it's, it's easier to breathe, and they sometimes find themselves on the free throw lines, and teams are on their knees. And it's not them. Other teams are on their knees because they're able to push the pace and they're able to keep up and keep their breath. Well, unfortunately for the Pioneers, it appears that the cardio has no impact on the Boilermakers as they are just running laps around them at this point of I 35. At this point, yeah, I'd say the cardio is kind of worn down after playing, you know, such a long game against Butler. And then Purdue, they haven't played in a week. So it's really a war of attrition, right? And Purdue is definitely winning. Azuju, great move in the post. And something worthy of note for this Denver team is they've gotten to play in two very historic Indiana basketball gyms. The uh, Hinkle Fieldhouse in Indianapolis, great place to watch a game. Mackey Arena, obviously a fantastic arena, one of the best atmospheres in college basketball. And Purdue going to pull down an offensive rebound. And looks Brooke like, Moore. Looks like Brooke Moore controlling the point right now, or running the point. And transition Denver with Brooke numbers Moore, ahead. Moore is limping. Moore limps back down the court. She's grimacing right now. The Purdue should sub her out. They need Brooke Moore off the bench, but she's fighting through it. And Looks like Denver has a complete lineup change waiting at the table for the next stoppage in play. Oh, what a play. Come behind the pick for the three. Uh, and a nice read defensively by Niagua Goni, but unable to secure it with her hands. 
And there's going to be a timeout here on the floor with 3.44 to go as the Boilermakers lead the Pioneers 95 to 64. And leading the charge here is India Sanders. Moving the ball around. Drive inside. And nice defensive possession by Niagua Goni. Kicked out. This set of Moore. players. This set of players uh, for Denver consists of three starters. Anna Jackson, Anna Jackson, Michaela Nett, and Megan Boyd. And a nice three for Jayla Smith. Jayla Smith really looking good coming off the bench. 12 points on four of six shooting so far. Looks like they're trying to set up a backside screen for Megan Boyd. They have Mary Wilson in the corner kind of hovering over there. And looks like we're going to be going in the other direction. It'll be Denver ball. Full court pass, not able to complete that. Looks like there's going to be another substitution here as Brooke Moore heads out. Check this ball going out right here. Couldn't really tell. Asia Stallings checking in here for the Boilermakers for Brooke Moore, who went out to thunderous applause. A well-deserved thunderous applause. Brooke Moore, talk about having a day. Stuffing the stat sheet again off the bench. And the Boilermakers looking to build offensively, feeding the post. Nice little move. Niagua unable to get it to go. Ooh. Ball's going to go out of bounds. Purdue basketball. That was a pretty move under the basket right there. And Denver looking to bring in Uju Ezudu. Inbounded, fed into the post. Spin move up. And the pretty shot is going to fall for Rokia Doumba. Let's get a check on the Purdue field goal percentage. We are still hovering around 66%. So not quite 70 like it was at half. But only four percentage points lower, 66% from the field. That's still an insane day for, for the Purdue Boilermakers. And with that one there, that'll do it. That is a... Double double for a Zudu as she pulls down her 10th rebound. See the foul here push from behind. That one by Niagua Goni. There's a difference between getting position and pushing, and that line might have been crossed there. It was actually her sixth straight double double. Uh, Zudu. That was a Zudu sixth straight double double. And the Boilermakers flirting with 100, looking to go over it on this possession. Shot up and off, but rebounded. And finished inside by Niagua Goni. And the crowd goes wild as the Boilermakers crack 100 points. 100 points, that's huge. Fun fact, this Denver team scored 100 points against Butler before coming here. Pretty rare to see 100 point games in women's college basketball. But here, two in a row for this Denver team. One for them, one against them. But to be fair, the one against Butler was in four overtimes. It that took, was. It took a few extra minutes to get there. <laughs> and feeding the post. Post hook up, no good. And bringing the ball up the floor, it's Mary Wilson. Wilson kicks it back. India Sanders at the top of the key. And they're looking to milk the clock down as there's 13 seconds left on the shot clock, 12 seconds left on the game clock from deep off the mark. Down by Megan Boyd. And the Boilermakers looking to, aren't done scoring yet. 
And time is going to run out. And a great contest here today between the Boilermakers and the Pioneers, 101 to 68.